completely different. On the topic of Warcry, yeah. okay, we also have news for Warcry, uh, including some terrain. Please don't let it be too much. <laughs> I'm waiting to see if it is. Ben, what, what's the crack of Warcry, man? Yeah, so uh, we've seen a couple of these previews over the last couple of months, uh, but now this weekend is finally seeing the pre-orders go live for a new warband for Warcry, which is called the Spire Tyrants. So if you don't know who the Spire Tyrants are, they're the warbands that exist within the Varen Spire in the Realm of Chaos. And they look down on all the other warbands who are trying to vie for Archeon's uh, you know, favor with, uh, with dis- dismay, and they hate them to their core. And so they are out to go and show them exactly who is on top and it's them. The set comes with some really cool... Do they not things. like Archon, then? No, no, they really like Archeon, but they think that everyone else should be nowhere near Archeon because they're the best. They're oh. like, no, 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 he's our, he's, he's our Chaos Daddy. That's what they say. Ah, so, yeah. This is, this is really freaking me daddy. out. Check that, <laughs> is it the dwarf? No, no, no. Check that eyeball out on the bottom right, staring out. Oh, of the that, fish that's man. part yeah. of the helm. That just, that's not fish man, I was going to say. It is a fish. Oh, no, no, it's no. not. It's a, it's a it's goat. A, it's, a it's a beast yeah. man. It's yeah. a beast man. Well, look at and him. That's part of the helmet. That's creepy. not his eye. No, uh, it looks like a creepy eye to me, Justin. That's not a creepy eye. <laughs> All right, right, what else we got in here? Right. So oh, that, that, set is, that set's pretty cool because it comes with some units that you can use in Age of Sigmar as well. Um, so obviously, they haven't really done anything with the um, the Marauder kit for a very, very long time. Yeah. But this is another thing that you can use to try and spice up your Chaos Armies, especially if you're doing something like the Slaves of Darkness, which came out not too long ago. I would and just yeah, buy even... boxes of that for, for well, yeah. They did split these out as unit boxes, if you remember a while yeah. back. It also comes with the Chaos Duarden that you can see in there as well. So you see the guy, the little, he's got a little bit of a weird um, cousin it thing going on with the beard and stuff, but it looks very, very cool indeed. He stuffed that helmet onto his head very, very nice. I yeah. like his underbite. But, but at, least yeah. his, at least his helmet is shorter than he is. Mm. <laughs> proper proper mm. Chaos Dwarf. Yeah. But as well as the uh, Chaos Warband there for the Spire Tyrants, there's also the big new monster. So there's the Ogroid Myrmidon, which is getting thrown into the mix. One of my c- coolest looking monsters that I've seen so far for what they're doing in Age of Sigma. Really like the look of it. We saw a Ogroid before the Thaumaturge in Silver Tower, which was a little bit of a mage type character. This, the, this then shows off a new updated version of that, as you can see there. Looking very cool indeed. Can I interject with a bit of pedantic historianism? Mm. Uh, P- yeah. Pedant away. Yeah, jo- I'm going to pedant on this one, but we'll all learn. <laughs> we'll all, is it about Myrmidons? We will all learn a thing from this. Okay. okay? Mm-hmm. He is a character that clearly fights on his own. Yes. Yet he's carrying a shield that was designed specifically for the shield wall. Maybe there are others that we haven't seen yet. (laughs) This is something I've learned. I've been doing some research on shields, okay? And I learned that the round shield that carried by the Myrmidons and the the Spartans and stuff like that there. Hoplites. uh, And hoplites was round specifically because it was designed for the shield wall. And that if you were uh, someone who fought outside of a shield wall, which in historical terms, you pretty much didn't. You know, because it would be senseless to go out onto a battlefield. Uh, well, if, if you're in like an honor duel or something, 1v1. Yes, but... <laughs> <laughs> yoo here I am! Come Why take... you? I don't like you! Come and have a go! Come and take my honor! But if you generally are separated, you're you're done for, okay? Yeah. But if, if you were doing that style of fighting, then what you actually need is a, a longer shield. So you had, obviously the Romans had the... Scutum. Scutum. <laughs> so the Roman scutum, okay, um, was bulky and stuff, but it allowed you to do the um, interesting other kinds of shield wall, like the testudo. Yes. yes, tortoise. The tortoise, okay. But actually, the, 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 the most effective shield design was the kite design, which happens to be your favorite, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Right. And the, the reason... teardrop Lloyd uses the kite's got a flat top. No, 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 no. A- anything like that. Okay, it's, it's called the kite. Okay, and the kite design is perfect from a uh, from a shield design perspective because it is it, it its shape is designed to give you the appropriate amount of protection mm. for each level of uh, for the importance of each part of the body. So your torso obviously requires more protection because of your shape than your legs. Oh, uh, so it is shaped that way. So it cuts down on the weight, the added weight you would have mm. had with the sco- scutum. scutum. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not, uh, uh, the, the round shield typically 
has too much. It has wasted uh, protection on yeah. each side, which is why it's used in the shield wall. And, and, the and leaves your wall. legs exposed. And it leaves your legs so exposed. So are you saying you'd prefer to see him with a massive uh, Norman kite shield on there? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it would I look have, forward to seeing that conversion. It, yeah, so, <laughs> it, it, so in this instance, okay, I think um, you know, my pedanticism, if it kicked in, he would have had a shield that would have been more kite-like. Or, to be fair, a grizzly bear like that wouldn't even carry a shield. Well, or whoa, 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 he whoa. might carry one of them wee tiny, what do you call buckler. them? Buckler. A buckler. It's not going to carry a buckler. It looks stupid, a tiny wee buckler on something that well, size. Well, you see, I've actually seen bucklers where it comes down from the hand and then just goes right down along the forearm, and it's only about a foot wide. Yeah, or a tree trunk. Um, no, he looks a, he looks epic as he is with that shield. Yeah, he, 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 he does. This is where the epicness of the look uh, comes yeah, shining come through. Second, I want to check that beard. Is it getting any more grey? It is getting grey. So all you do is, on the front of this strappage he has here, Yes, you make like a papoose and you just hang a cast marauder off that, which is both <laughs> protection and when you get up close, additional attacks. Yes, and when he's dead, you can eat him. Yeah. And, and they snack between and meals. snack between meals. Very important. Uh, Come on, I'm allowed snacks. to. I'm allowed to unleash a little bit of inner grognard every now and again. But hey, you've learned something. The round shield was designed for shield wall. Okay. There so a big individual character stomping around on his own wouldn't get much benefit from that. Aside from looking. Cool. Well, apart from he has a shield. Well, <laughs> apart from the benefit of a shield. Well, a shield it's versus no shield, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I believe there's some terrain. Please don't let it be Well, no, there is there is actually some Stormcast first. All right, okay. Yeah, so as well as the Chaos Warband for the Spy Tyrants that's coming out, they've also put together, actual, well, they're going to put together actual box sets that will allow you to play uh, some of the other factions that were in introduced into Warcry when it first launched, but you couldn't actually get them together. You had to go and buy separate boxes and then build your warband from there. And you had the little card packs, if you remember, but now they're going to be bringing some bits together. So you're going to have one for order, one for destruction and one for death. Um, so for order, you've got the, the Stormcast Eternals there in the Vanguard chamber, as you can uh -huh. see. Then you've got uh, the Gloom Spike Gits or Squigs, as we like to call them there. You know, well, the Night Goblins anyway, from old Warhammer, bounce around on their Squigs, which is very cool. Lovely and set then finally. And then finally, there's the Night Haunt, uh, which are going to be there for your, if you're going to be playing the Grand Alliance of Death. And they come with a whole bunch of the sort of like Cairn Wraith style creatures and the Banshees and that kind of thing as well. Um, so if you want to play Warcry, but you don't want to play as one of the Chaos Warbands, then you can now pick up these as sort of like a nice intro into the game world without having to go down the path of Chaos and supporting Archeon and that kind of thing. And there are plenty of reasons why all of these different factions would be fighting in the realm of Chaos, try and stop them or aid them or do something else at the same time. Because reason number chaos, one so, is yeah. if you like Warcry as a game, when well, you yeah, want exactly. to play play something else, this is mm -hmm. a great way to do it. I wonder, and will the cards be available separately, Ben, for those of us that already have all those models? Uh, I'm not entirely sure on that front. Uh, I would have to wait and see what happens when it goes live later on today and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's the only the, complaint uh, I kind of have is that you know, yeah. the, the, those card conversion sets were there at the start, yeah. if That's I remember same. correctly. Yeah. And it's, it's not a huge amount of work to package up Let's a see deck what, of cards. Yeah. Like, look at that, Warren. Look, there's a bell in the middle. I well, like that. You must be well chucked. <laughs> it's the bell on the end that, it, that does it for me. Lloyd. Well, you see, there, there's one little guy just carrying an urn in the back there, which is kind of no, cool. It's a drum. It's a drum. Is it a drum? <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. It looked like a... Looked like a that was wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's... Uh, unless he really hates his grandfather. <laughs> He's just beating he just, the end of the urn. I don't know. When Warren's gone, you know, if he goes into an urn, donk, donk, he's still in there. <laughs> I will haunt you, boy, if you do that to me. <laughs> I think you'd haunt me anyway. So, um, yeah, it, it's... Um, I, they, they did have the card decks. Mm. They sold yes, they out. Did, yeah. And then they were they, they were gone. Yeah. It, please don't do that. Right. You know th these card yeah. decks are are cool, and they, they, I don't think there's any reason why they couldn't be continuously in stock. Well, it was my gripe from last week. They made you know? the the Necromunda ones limited edition. Yeah, I or can understand. I can understand dice and stuff like that being limited edition. Mm. No issue with dice being limited edition. Coming in limited run. Yeah, selling out, and then people sticking them on eBay for silly amounts. That's fine. Well, you, you do what you do. You be you. Mm. I be me. But when it comes to the cards... Yeah, that's actual gameplay stuff. Yeah, and, and, and there's no reason for them to go out of stock. Mm. You know, and even if they did end up sitting on shelves or something like that somewhere for a while, you know, they're not that expensive for it to have been a major issue. You know, I can mm. understand the production of dice and stuff. They can't be complicated. It all comes in from China. 
the cards could be printed by a company, you know, down the road. But you see, know, I, I would be happy if they issue. just completely converted it to a PDF after they had done the run. <sighs> I th- it's something I could cut out and put into a card sleeve and actually use as a normal card. Uh, no, no, we officially don't don't condone anything of that nature at all. It has no, to be a card by the company. and it has to be purchased and it okay. has to go through an authorized dealer. Okay, that's the official stance. Okay, there you officially. go. Officially, fair enough. <laughs> Justin, we can make like ten p if we sell a deck of them cards, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready for your train? Yes, I am yeah. ready for the train. I've been looking well, forward to it. So they've been doing some really cool stuff for Warcry, where they've done a whole bunch of different sort of like packaged battlefields that you'd be able to set up and play a little bit like they did with the core set, where you know had rules for setting up terrain and all that kind of thing. Yeah. One of the new ones they're doing for that is this new Soul Drain Forest set, which you can see here, which comes with some new trees that have been updated to fit into the kind of mortal realms and give a little bit more of a heroic proportion to everything. But as well as the trees, you also get some of those big ruin segments as well. So if you want to lay down a little bit of a maybe a temple to Sigmar that has been reclaimed by the woodlands and that kind of thing, and you've got that option there at the same time. I'd assume it's going to come with some interesting stuff when it comes to setting up battlefields and that kind of thing, because they've normally done that before in the past. I think these look really good, and for anyone who really wants to play like old Warhammer as well in the old world, you could always use these as like a little bit of the Drakwald Forest as well, because I know a lot of people are really getting stuck back into that kind of thing too. So there's some really nice options there when it comes to trees. And I think there's really nice little bits of character and narrative driven into those as well. So you can see little dead bodies and all sorts of stuff underneath the roots. And it looks very cool. There's a little bit of ancient woodland within the mortal realms. They've got that, um, oh, I'm trying to remember the name of the tree. Oh, that's like Baruba or something like that with a big, deep root structure. Yes. It, the big, almost like cages. The Baobab or Baobab. Uh, uh, it's not more like a mangrove? Some, something bee-based anyway. Um, but just having those sort of wooden cages. And I thought you could stick a dead body in there quite happily. And then I seen actually a skeleton on one of the other bases. I think, yeah, oh, yeah. it'd what, be lost in what, there. Ben, okay, right? I don't want to be a negative ninny here. Okay, yeah. it's um, normally my job. Bring the picture back. But I want that in a minute. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it as I see it. I was okay. But before I do, it's always worth to research what you're gonna say before you say it. Okay? Right. So Ben, mm-hmm. that weird root cagey structure. Yeah. Has it got a gameplay thing about it, or what? It, it, why is that there? Is there? Do we, do we know of any specific reason of why that's there? I, the the only reason I could think of is one that I've completely just made up myself off the top of my head. Good man, that'll that do for that me. They are, is that they are magical trees and they maybe wander across the realms, potentially a little bit like the Ents would do or something. This in is Lord not the Tana. Oh, they're there, yeah. they're there okay. as a home for your bars and badgers. Oh, exactly, of we course. There you go. <laughs> That's it, Ben. <laughs> okay, it's, right. it's they're, they're, they're entrances to the Sylvaneth realms beneath the earth. Trees are something that is close to my heart. Mm. Okay. Um, I, I am uh, I am recently been working on a kind of like a uh, a creepy dead forest kind of thing. Okay, mm. now I initially went looking for the old Games Workshop trees, mm. which I will freely admit I didn't like them when they came out, mm. and it wasn't until the point that I could no longer get them <laughs> that they suddenly became what I wanted, and I thought they were great. Um, Lloyd did a lovely job on them on the uh, on one of the demo tables that, that we run here. So I went looking for them and realized you couldn't get them. And all you could get was these strange fairy ring trees, mm. which I really dislike. I dislike, <laughs> I, there, uh, there's something just really weird about them. The, 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 that root thing just doesn't do it for me. So the thing, the thing I was going to say, the thing that I really like about it, actually, just before you dive in, is that, I, that it gives you the impression of a lot of the ancient woodland photos you see of, like, the depths of Europe in the Black Forest and that kind of thing, or up in Scandinavia. And I think that's maybe why they tried to go through that, to give it that idea of this twisted forest that is not welcoming to anybody who comes into it. Maybe. Let me give you an alternative. Okay. Okay? Go to printablescenery.com. Because ultimately, I couldn't find the trees that I was after. So I ended up um, uh, running them through a 3D printer of my own, okay, or on my own. But if you have a friend with a 3D printer or one of them local fab labs or whatever, okay, you could do that. There's one that we use. No, 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 that's a mushroom. Type it. That's a mushroom, Justin. Well, you did use some mushrooms in it. Justin, Um, let's let's leave mushrooms. If I'm going to get through this show, we can't talk mushrooms, man. Okay, so. Punched in tree. No, scroll down and I will get you. There you go. Right, do you see them Glimwood trees? Yeah. 
And the vomiting tree. Yeah, I've got it opening. Open them both. I don't need anything else. That's there's enough. There's other. Nice ones in there. There's other. I quite trees. like the twisty tree up above. That's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That there's one? there's loads, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pick you out the the right. dead creepy trees. So there's your gloomwood wood trees. Right. So these gloomwood trees. No, I'm gonna make a case for this. Right. These guys at Printable Scenery mm. are really switched on. Those trees print without supports. Yes. Right. They're designed to just work. You don't need to worry about all these supports and rubbish and stuff like that there. You put them on your print bread and you press go. Mm. The uh, other reason that tr the, the 3D printing is a great way to go down the route of this kind of scenery is you're able to adjust the size and the proportions of each tree when it goes to print. You can Therefore, also you can make them bigger, smaller, fatter or thinner. Fatter or, th or, or thinner. And I was able to get many of these trees printed, okay? And uh, each tree, so let's let's do a cost, just a, a little cost analysis, okay? So to buy the to buy the the actual trees themselves, it is ten dollars. Ten bucks, right? Buys the trees, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's ten bucks spent, and you have no trees, okay? Mm -hmm. You're a negative tree. You're you, well, you're not <laughs> negative tree. Oh, well, you're you are because you've got the paper. <laughs> oh, you're negative ten. Made over some paper. Okay, you're you're not negative tree yet. Okay, you're negative ten bucks. But um, so okay, so I've uh, so you've went and you've bought those fairy ring trees. Yeah. Um, I can't remember how much they cost. Ben will find out for me. Okay. I don't think we've got a price for them. Yeah. So get me find out how much the big box of the fairy trees costs because it, it already exists as a big box on the right, GW okay. website. So get me what the retail price of that is. Mm. So I'm currently you've paid X amount for your big box of trees. I have spent ten bucks and have no trees at this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's make the assumption you have access to a 3D printer. Okay. Otherwise, these are going to be damn expensive trees. But let's make the assumption yeah. that you have access yeah, exactly. at least to that. It's not okay? ten bucks plus the cost of a 3D printer. No, no. But I'm going to I'm going to take into account the material costs and the energy costs. Okay. So Ben, how much is the fairy ring trees? I, I cannot find trees now on um, on their web on the Games Workshop website. So. Yeah, see, yeah, see, <laughs> that was tree man. Whenever you go looking for the thing, it's not there. Right. I estimate, Honey. Justin, mm. that um, each one of those trees printed to a good size, about yawn length. All right. Yeah. Would cost less than a pound. From a reel, you'll probably get about twenty five trees. So if it's 15 quid a reel, that's about 90p a tree ish. Yeah, but 80. 80, right. 90 p a tree. So, so let's so say you're saying he's so right. About a pound then. Well, yeah. so, so four pyre, that's just right. material. So you're so, saying he's right. Yeah, it's so all about a pound. <laughs> Roughly, yeah. Okay. okay. So, um, so one 15 pound reel yeah. Yeah. of a decent PLA, yeah. okay, um, I should, in theory, be able to get 15 trees from that. Well, I would say more, but yeah. Yeah. Plus, like uh, Justin says, 15, 15 good sized trees, maybe 20, 30 of various sizes. Well, I, I remember whenever we ran them out, we did about 25 of them, and that was varying the sizes. Yeah. yeah. Plus, your electrical cost, like Justin pointed out. Okay, so say 20. Plus, a little bit of your rent for the amount of time it took mm. to print them because you need a house to sit in to print them. <laughs> right, so 20 quid. <laughs> yeah. Plus, right. the food you had to eat while so, you were waiting for it to good print. Point. Okay, Ben. I was going to say, so I found the the wildwood trees, which are what I then used cr to create this set alongside the Correct. ruins. Correct, yeah. And for that set, it's £30 for three trees, so right. £10 each. I so you've yeah. spent £30 and you've got three lovely plastic trees. Well, lovely, let's see. You've got quality. plastic trees. Quality, quality plastic trees. For £30, you've got three of them. Yeah. I have spent $10 well, well, well. and then another £20, and I have 25 yeah, so it's really good looking trees. One pound twenty a tree, and you can basically double the amount you're getting. Well, yeah. no, more than double your amount. So you have enough to put down an objective on a gaming table. I have enough to make a gaming table, and you can make them fat, and I can change the change the dimensions of them. That, and you can print as many of them as you ever want. You're a tree yeah. feeder. That's you're it. not. You're not. You're not. You're you not fertilized them. by this. You can. You can go back and buy another fifteen pound reel, okay. Keep going. So for fifty pounds, okay. Well, yeah, fifty fifty pounds less mm -hmm. because ten dollars is not the same as ten pounds. But for fifty pounds now, for an extra twenty pounds, I now have fifty trees mm -hmm. to your three trees. Well, 
they, they would probably have five trees at that point because 50. Yeah, I've spent 20 pounds more, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So for 20, for, for 20 pounds. The other set is 30 pounds. You get three trees. <laughs> so they would get two more trees. Oh, God, he's right. I never realized it. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Sarcasm. Numbers. I've got, I've got to roll that, Numbers. Got to roll that sarcasm back. And then you guys wonder why I bring my star, uh, my sarcasm death ray out. You say Star Crash. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, watch that. Anyway, so. Can I just get back to the point on the war cry terrain, okay? I'm sorry it's fairly uninspired. That's not modular. No, it's not. It should be modular. I don't like it. No. I don't, I don't uh, because the... Uh, the. But there's a big head there. No, but, there's two big heads. Right. For a start, all those bits of pieces, mm. there's nothing... They're not there to play on. They're mm. just there for you to walk around. Okay, so all, all every piece of that doesn't add any new dimension to the game in any well, sense. It's just there for you to be an obstacle that you move around. You in, might get a slight in, cover save from it. In in games of like Age of Sigma, they do tend to have it so that certain terrain elements do offer potentially raw benefits and stuff like that. So there may be something in the larger game. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not climbing over it, but, or or okay. it's not it's not the the nice terrain. I want to see more. Of the nice terrain that was in the starter set, it was inspired. It was. Uh, I really do credit where credit's due. Amazing terrain. Well, this, well, some of the big terrain packs they've done as well have been really gorgeous. This is half free pack, yeah, and half fairly uh, uninspired. Mm. You know, it, it's adding a bit of theme to your gaming table, mm. but it's not adding much in the way of uh, dynamicness mm. to your gaming table. Well, we don't know because at this rate, I prefer the Necromunda stuff to that. There might be some rules that but go along with this terrain. That's because it's you can activate a terrain component. Slowly sinking into your head that the Necromunda terrain is spot on. That's <laughs> what. <laughs> uh, is there anything else in this news story, Ben? Yes. Uh, well, there, there was a little bit of an art concept peek at uh, what Teclis is going to look at as look ah. like as well. So Teclis, as we discussed on previous shows, is turning into a god, and he's in the search for his own elven race to bring back to the forefront in Age of Sigma. And so that's the new take on him that you'll hopefully be seeing in model form. He does come with his very traditional looking sword and his staff that you might remember from his old character. Uh, but um, other than that, he's definitely ascended to uh, you know a type of godhood within the world of uh, Age of Sigma now. Uh, so he's yeah, a tabbed, uh, well, he's got up there with Slade in the mutton chop sideburn. <laughs> <laughs> I think Teclis looks female. Uh, I think that face is bit. beautiful. It's, that's elves. That's yeah. elves for you. Yeah. It's it's never lovely. tell. It is yeah. lovely. I, I love it as a piece of art. I think it's great. Mm. Um, okay. It's interesting to see how many fiddly bits it comes with when it comes to the uh, plastic kit. But there you go. Oh, many. <laughs> oh, there'll, there'll be lots, I'm sure. And, it, and it'll be held to the base by one two mil piece of plastic. Yes. Yeah. No doubt. <laughs> well, it'll probably have a couple of contact points at best. So.